Beta Ray Bill, Origins Explored. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry and this is Marvelous Videos. Thor Love and Thunder is finally upon us. For the longest time, fans have believed that the movie will bring forth an important ally of Thor known as Beta Ray Bill, especially with Thor Ragnarok having an easter egg that fuels this fire. However, so far, Beta Ray Bill is nowhere to be seen. This is a man who has also been worthy of Mjolnir. A champion of planet Corbin, Beta Ray Bill is a bioengineered alien who protects the people of his now destroyed planet as their champion. Somewhere down the line he becomes friends with Thor, even though they initially considered each other to be an enemy, and is even given the Stormbreaker. The character was created by Walt Simonson and he went on to make his comic book debut in 1983. In today's video we'll dive into Beta Ray Bill's debut and alliance with the Asgardians and other cool arcs with him as the main character. Before we go into our explanation we have a very small request. If you like our content please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. Peter Ray Bill Backstory explored. Before we check out who Beta Ray Bill is, it's necessary to know where he comes from. Bill is a Corbinite from the planet in the burning galaxy known as Corbin. The planet has technology far superior compared to that of Earth's and it has colonized several planets throughout a thousand years. Many of these planets belong to the Nine Worlds and, as a result, had fallen prey to the demon Surtur. That's the cute little guy who's very much responsible for the fun event known as Ragnarok. Corbin survived the first explosion but it also caused the temperature of the burning galaxy to skyrocket. Soon the heat got too strong for the Corbinites. They utilized their top tier technology to the fullest to create a fleet of massive spaceships for their people. These AI spaceships were sentient and would be used for the Corbinites escape and survival until they found a habitable planet. And with a shortage of food the people were kept in cryopreservation. However, someone had to defend and protect these people and for that reason the Corbinites needed a champion. Needless to say it was Beta Ray Bill who was selected to fill this role. His biology was structured with that of the strongest carnivore of Corbin, which was responsible for his strange appearance. The Corbinites left the burning galaxy before the destruction of their home, but they were chased by millions of demons who wanted to destroy them. This caused Beta Ray Bill's spaceship Scuttlebutt to escape to a solar system we're all familiar with. The character made his debut in the 1983 comic series by Marvel known as The Mighty Thor and appeared in the 337th issue. The issue opens with not the Mighty Thor himself, but Don Blake, the mortal persona of Thor. The Asgardian had adopted this persona to learn humility. Odin had transformed him into a crippled professor at Harvard University and he had also seized Thor's hammer Mjolnir. As Don Blake, Thor carried a staff mainly to help him walk because he was crippled but also to unleash his godly power. Don Blake is at Grant Park in Chicago when Nick Fury ambushes him and shoves him inside his car. Turns out S.H.I.E.L.D. has intercepted the arrival of a mysterious alien ship and it's heading towards Earth at a speed that dwarfs the speed of light itself. This is Beta Ray Bill's ship, Scuttlebutt, but of course Thor and S.H.I.E.L.D. don't know anything about it. Thor agrees to help Midgard once again. He unleashes the power of the mighty Asgardian god and tries to catch up to Scuttlebutt. After a struggle he catches up but falls victim to the ship's automated weapons. Being a god, Thor is obviously able to neutralize the threat and finds himself inside the spaceship. There he comes across a mysterious figure in cryopreservation which suddenly breaks free and introduces himself as Beta Ray Bill. However, Bill believes Thor to be one of the demons who are after the Corbinites while Thor also believes Bill to be a threat. The two begin to fight but Thor ends up dropping Mjolnir. As he turns into Don Blake once again, his body is weakened to that of a mortal man. Scuttlebutt, now damaged, closes in on Earth and is about to crash. Beta Ray Bill forms a stasis egg to protect himself and Don Blake to survive the crash and they are soon greeted by Nick Fury. Bill is oblivious to these people and believes them all to be a threat and tries to look for Thor's hammer. Instead he finds the stick of Don Blake. Frustrated he strikes a wall with the stick to get his angst out, but ends up getting the godly power of Thor himself. With Mjolnir in his hands, he throws the hammer at a shield vehicle and is surprised when the hammer returns to him after each impact. Soon the skies open to reveal Odin who mistakes Bill for Thor because who would guess that some random alien is suddenly worthy of Mjolnir. Beta Ray Bill is then taken to Asgard while Don Blake or the original Thor is left as a mortal on Earth. In the next issue, Don Blake learns about Bill wielding the hammer and being taken to Asgard by Odin 
Odin from Nick Fury. Meanwhile in Asgard, the people realize that the warrior that has returned is not Thor at all. Odin is surprised to see the alien being worthy of Mjolnir and prepares to question him, but Bill hurls the hammer at the god as he claims that he has won it fair and square in combat. Odin catches the hammer and senses that Bill is speaking the truth, which further complicates the matter. So he encases Bill in a vessel and brings Don Blake back to Asgard. Blake turns into Thor once again while Bill is released. Odin agrees to communicate with Bill and learns about the Corbinites. Bill is also grateful to have found Mjolnir, as it is a weapon that can help him protect his people. But the weapon, in all honesty, has not been won in complete fairness, mainly because Thor had been handicapped by his father. Odin had never imagined someone else would be able to wield Mjolnir, so with both of them now having a claim on the hammer, they will have to battle one another to own it. And so, a trial by combat is decided. In this combat, both warriors will fight without weapons and the one who attains victory will get Mjolnir. Due to its high stakes, they will also have to fight to the death. For the longest time they fight on equal ground, that is until they fight near a river of lava where they knock each other out. In this terrain, Bill has the advantage since he has been nurtured in the intense heat of Corbin. He revives himself before Thor can, winning the battle. But instead of letting Thor die, he lifts his body and is transported to Asgard, this time as the winner of Mjolnir. But once again, Odin reveals Bill was given an advantage on purpose. The Norse god wanted to test how worthy Bill truly was. He wanted to humble Thor as well. Ultimately, Thor got Mjolnir back and the Stormbreaker was forged for Beta Ray Bill. Using Stormbreaker, Bill protected the Corbinites and became an ally of the Asgardians. Thor soon became his oath brother, and Asgard was now another home to him. Naturally, he sided with the Asgardians during Ragnarok as the Norse gods fought Surtur and his flaming demons. However, Thor ultimately sent him back to the Corbinites to keep the memories of the Asgardians alive. Face the wrath of Stormbreaker! The Amazing Story Arc of Beta Ray Bill In 2005, Marvel published a six-issue story arc for Beta Ray Bill known as Stormbreaker, the saga of Beta Ray Bill. These comics were written by Dan Berman and Michael Avon Oming, while Andrea DeVito handed the art for it. The first issue opens with a discussion in the High Council Chambers of New Corbin, where a Corbinian named Rogota asks for Beta Ray Bill to be denounced as their champion. With Bill spending too much time with the Asgardian gods, the Corbinians begin to chastise him. They also wish for the reality activation of Alpha Ray instead, since a terrible catastrophe is approaching them once again. This catastrophe is Galactus, and all of this takes place while Beta Ray Bill is fighting with the Asgardians during Ragnarok. Galactus is a cosmic being who consumes planets for his continuous survival. He also has a herald who does the job of finding such planets for him. Here, Galactus is known as Ashta, and there's no force in the universe that can stop Galactus from consuming them, such is the cosmic being's power. Unfortunately, Ashta arrives before the Council can reach a decision. Around this time, Beta Ray Bill is transported away from Asgard by Thor while the Corbinians send their ships to fight Ashtar. Alpha Ray is released, but he is unstable. Beta Ray arrives to fight Ashtar as well, but is instead engaged by the unstable Alpha Ray. But ultimately, he is swatted away by Galactus himself, while the cosmic being devours New Corbin, having Bill experience the destruction of his homes New Corbin and Asgard on the same day. In the next issue known as The Crumbs of Galactus, Galactus's herald Stardust heads to destroy the remaining defenders of New Corbin while his master consumes the planet. Meanwhile, Beta Ray Bill has survived despite having damaged Galactus' helmet and finds his sentient spaceship Scuttlebutt. The spaceship tells Bill about the flight of the Corbinians into the Meta Orb, a device that has stored the consciousness of New Corbin's people. At the same time, an enraged Stardust is sent to destroy Beta Ray Bill for surviving and damaging Galactus' helmet. Stardust soon appears in front of Bill and gets hold of the Meta Orb. Beta Ray Bill charges at the Herald to save his people again, but Stardust starts to pour his cosmic energy into the orb. The third issue is mainly a battle between the two beings. Beta Ray Bill manages to get his hands on the Meta Orb once again and leaves it with Scuttlebutt. He then engages in a violent fight with the Herald of Galactus, shattering planetoids and grappling one another. In fact, Stardust realizes that he had underestimated the champion and the strength of the Stormbreaker. Ultimately, Bill kind of emerges victorious, kind of. However, Stardust is a cosmic being. Bill can never truly defeat him. He rises once again as he glows blue and white with power. He opens a portal that acts as a gate to the cosmic hell in order to send Beta Ray Bill into the treacherous place of the exiled demons. Somehow, Beta Ray Bill manages not to get sucked in, but something else comes out of it as it latches onto Bill. Stardust notices that something is escaping and closes the portal immediately, but the SKP knocks both of them out. Finally, it reveals itself to be Astaroth, an old one born from the chaos of creation. The fourth issue dives deeper into Astaroth, who is now 
reveling in being free once again, and just like Galactus, she feeds on planets as well. But unlike Galactus, she doesn't care for the cycle of creation and destruction. She consumes purely to cause as much chaos as she can. While she engages in destruction, Beta Ray Bill and Stardust revive. The Herald tells the champion about the massacre that awaits them, for which they will have to join forces momentarily. It turns out that when Stardust try to exile Bill to cosmic hell, a small fragment of Astaroth escaped. She wishes to destroy any order in the universe and cause nothing but a chaos of unprecedented scale. However, due to only a small fragment of her being free, she's not as strong as she should be. But she will gain this strength by consuming planets, solar systems, the universe, and even the multiverse. The reason why Bill didn't get sucked into Stardust's portal to hell was because of his will, and that very will caused Astaroth to latch onto him and find freedom once again. So now, they will have to stop her before it's too late. So, Bill and Stardust team up to fight the evil. They find Astaroth and put all of their efforts into driving her into the core of a planet. Stardust then opens up a black hole to take care of Astaroth once and for all, but with her unreal powers, Astaroth begins to twist the gravity of the black hole, causing it to pull Beta Ray Bill and Stardust towards it instead. In the fifth issue, which is Omega, the end, Alpha Ray is revived by Galactus, who powers him up with the power cosmic, which is how the Silver Surfer and the Heralds of Galactus usually get their powers. Alpha Ray arrives at the party and drives Astaroth into the black hole, thus saving Bill and Stardust. Suddenly, Bill is transported to a different place, a place that looks like nothing he's ever seen before. Here, he has no form and the place has no terrain. He thinks he's dead when he's told by someone that he is being rewarded instead. He finds Scuttlebutt here and then heads to Asgard, or whatever remains of the place after Ragnarok. While Surtur comes crashing on the devastated ground, the Meta Orb, now unstable, turns into a demonic version of Beta Ray Bill himself. However, it's Astaroth who had sent some of her evil essence into the orb while she battles Stardust and Beta Ray Bill. As Omega Ray, she tells him that she is fed on whatever was in the Meta Orb, which pushes Bill into a frenzy, as the Meta Orb had the consciousness of his people, 80% of which had actually survived because of the orb. Bill begins to violently pound on Astaroth with the power of the Stormbreaker and ultimately kills her. But suddenly, in the sixth issue known as The Death and Life of Beta Ray Bill, the entire premise changes. A man named Simon Walters also dies but not really. As he catches his breath again, he stumbles out into a speeding car on Earth. The car gets wrecked and the driver is enraged. This young man then transforms into a boar in front of Simon. The boar begins to attack Simon, who is not nearly as strong as Beta Ray Bill, kind of like Thor and Don Blake. However, as Simon slams his fist on the ground, he becomes Beta Ray Bill once again. Back in his element, Bill sends the boar soaring across the sky with his strength, and somewhere down the line, he finds himself around Spider-Man, who is trying to save a bus for of passengers. With Spider-Man now in the picture, Bill and Spidey take down the boar together and team up for some pizza. Here, Bill tells Spider-Man about who he truly is. Even though Bill's memory is patchy and he doesn't remember much, he tells Spider-Man the things he can piece together. Bill had destroyed Omega Ray, that is his dark and evil version from the previous issue, and was on the verge of death himself. However, he realized that all the souls in the Meta Orb were not dead yet, which meant there was still hope. But before he could do anything, he blacked out. A figure stood over him and reminded him of a new beginning and a new life that awaited him and his people. And then he took his last breath as Beta Ray Bill and his first breath as Simon. The Secret Invasion Arc Some time later, Beta Ray Bill reverted back to his Corbinite body from Simon. He also became a prisoner of the Skrulls and was a subject for their experiments and torture. He was then sent to Asgard as Simon, with this Asgard being vulnerable to attacks from the Skrulls. In Asgard, Thor believed Simon to be the real Beta Ray Bill, while several others thought it was a Skrull agent in disguise. Loki did more damage by fueling the fire and riling up the Asgards to kill Bill. Thor was only proven right after he tossed Mjolnir to Simon and the Corbinian championed it. Soon, he turned into his cyborg form as he proved himself to be worthy. He then fought alongside the Asgardians to fight off the Skrulls. During a fight with a female Super Skrull, Beta Ray Bill went against her with a Stormbreaker, which was sliced in half. However, he was no match for her, so Thor had to team up with Bill. The Super Skrull then reforged the Stormbreaker to its original form and hurled it towards an Asgardian, but it was stopped midway by Thor, who then passed it on to Beta Ray Bill. Later, Bill parted ways with Thor as he was in limbo following his encounter with the ghost figure who turned him into Simon. He then returned to the cosmos to seek answers. Beta Ray Bill also protected some alien monks who turned out to be the same Skrulls who had tortured him. These Skrulls suddenly began to see Bill as their new god after repenting for their sins, but Bill wasn't having any of it.
What makes Beta Ray Bill unimaginably strong? Beta Ray Bill is the best gladiator of Corbin and one of the greatest warriors of his galaxy. As a being that can wield Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, fight alongside gods, damage Galactus's helmet, fight Astaroth and almost defeat a cosmic being like Stardust, it's safe to say that Beta Ray Bill is remarkably powerful. His first advantage is his physiology as an alien cyborg which makes him a lot stronger and faster than any other Corbinite. With this also comes superhuman strength with which he can crush moons and destroy planets. He is almost invulnerable to injury as we can assess from the fact that he flows through stars and sustains minimal damage from beings like Thanos. He can also surpass the speed of light thanks to Stormbreaker. In fact Stormbreaker alone gives him several other power amps. The weapon is extremely durable thanks to the mystical Uru metal. He can obviously make the weapon move in any direction and it will always return to him. It even allows Bill to teleport anything even if it's light years away. Stormbreaker is great at sensing mystical and cosmic energy that is near Bill and can track beings across the universe. Just like Thor's Mjolnir, Beta Ray Bill can use Stormbreaker to project energy, fly, control the weather with its lightning and hurricanes, exercise enormous striking power, create shields and heal others. His ship, Scuttlebutt, adds to his remarkability. In a way it's the superior Corbinian technology, but you wouldn't want to mess with someone who has such a badass ship by his side. This AI operated vessel absorbs stars for fuel, moves at superluminal speeds, repairs itself, produces arms, drones, and other types of firepower for combat and even heals its passengers of their physiological problems. And of course it can create force fields, stasis fields and track things or beings. Thor might be incredibly strong but technology is not his strongest suit. So a point to Beta Ray Bill for this. You have my sympathy because it will not be me! Where else has he appeared? Even though Beta Ray Bill has not appeared in Thor Love and Thunder, he has made a cameo in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, it's less of a cameo and more of an easter egg. In Thor Ragnarok, the Grandmaster's Tower sported a giant sculpture of Beta Ray Bill alongside other champions, as Bill had fought in Sakaar's gladiator matches and attained victory. He also appeared in the 2010 animated movie Planet Hulk. This film followed Beta Ray Bill's journey to Sakaar via a wormhole where he was forced to go against Hulk. When it comes to television, Beta Ray Bill appeared in the Silver Surfer animated series, the Superhero Squad show and Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It doesn't matter if Beta Ray Bill has not yet appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there's still a long journey ahead with the MCU now that it's exploring the multiverse. If and when they venture into the cosmos, it's very likely that we'll finally get to see characters like Beta Ray Bill and Galactus. And with that today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Beta Ray Bill? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then don't forget to like and comment on this video. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a good one.